Good morning. Whew, Saturday morning. I've uh, some great time with God this morning, and I wanted to record this early this morning uh, and, and invite you. If you're ever free on a Saturday, well, and you live in Salina, you ever free on a Saturday at 9 o'clock, we do a Bible study at Panera uh, right now. If it gets too big, we'll probably move it somewhere else. But uh, we do a Bible study at Panera uh, through the book of Philippians right now. We just study through the Bible. Uh, I encourage you to come. We'd love to have you. But th- that's not the point of this message, this short time. And I only got 10 minutes. We're in Matthew. Matthew chapter 2. And, and I want you to, to know I've got some sad news for you. It's sad, and and I've got to share it. The sad news is this. There's only 356 days till Christmas. That's it. Man, I hope that gives you enough time. I wanted to pre-warn you uh, to get your Christmas stockings ready. Start playing the Christmas music now. Uh, You know, get ready to hang your, your Christmas trees. I don't know. It might be a fire hazard. Get the fake ones, and you're great to go. But... 356 days, that's it, until Christmas. And in all seriousness, we're going to talk about that for a minute, this idea that Jesus is coming again. Uh, we celebrate on Christmas the Jesus coming to this earth, but we're going to look a little further. We're looking in Matthew chapter 2, and I hope you're reading through. Uh, share this with your friends and, and share it. It's going to go onto a YouTube channel. That's the only advertisement I'm going to do about it. It's just to make it easier, pull it off to Facebook, and to put it there so that people can watch them uh, and hopefully study along. Matthew chapter 2, I want you to show you something and follow along. Matthew chapter 2 verse 1, it says, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judah during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born the King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him, scripture says. Now verse 3, see this as well, when King Herod heard this, he was disturbed don't miss this, in all Jerusalem with him, when he had called together all of the people, now let's understand who he's calling, all the people, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, he asked them, where is the Messiah to be born? And this is what the chief priests, teachers of the law, this is what he said, verse 5, in Bethlehem, in Judah, they knew, they replied. For this is what the prophecy has written. And it says it here in verse 6, it says, but you, Bethlehem, is the land of Judah, and or so, well, I can't read this morning. But you, Bethlehem, is the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who shepherd my people of Israel. Who will shepherd my people of Israel? They knew who it was. Now, here's the interesting thing. Let's go back. And that's all we'll see today in the scripture. Go back and we'll read. We'll talk more about tomorrow. But this idea of what's going on, the, these magi who had come far away from the east, most likely from Babylon. I don't have time to tell you why, but, but what this is, it was a prophecy fulfilled in Old Testament scripture that a star would come and that star would symbolize the king. And so that's what's going on here. These magi who are not Jews, but that had heard of a prophecy, they didn't even know where. They had to go find out. They didn't have it all. But they knew the king was coming. And they came to worship. And the power of what it was, they were seeking God. They were seeking something different. They didn't have it all, but they wanted to come and worship. But here's the interesting thing. The religious. It says it there. It says the chief priest and the teachers of the law, they were all distressed with Herod. And this is why. Herod had bought in his kingship. You can go look in history and see how he does that. But he buys his kingship and becomes the king of, of Israel. And as the king, and he hears about this other king coming. Not only does this stress him out, wait a second, who's this king? I'm the king, I got this. But it it stresses out the religious or it stresses out the Jews because they don't want this change. They knew it. They had scripture to make it clear. 
Now, I'm going to share with you something, and this is a confession. Uh, it happens in ministry. It, it, I've got to be honest, I've done it. You can even see a hint of it all the way back in Genesis. In Genesis, Satan and Eve are talking, and Satan says to Eve, Is it true? Is it really true? That if you eat the fruit, you will die. And what does Eve say? Now, you need to know this. This is before sin. So she's not lying. But Eve says, surely if I eat the fruit or if I touch it, I would die. Wait a second. What did God tell Adam? He, he said, look, don't eat the fruit or surely you will die. Now Eve knows, I shouldn't even touch it. What happened there? I don't know. Scripture doesn't make it clear to what it is. But I lean to this idea because we do it sometimes. We do that with our family, with our kids. We, we go further because the grace of God sometimes doesn't make sense to me. Adam do that? Did he say to Eve, Eve, don't eat it. In fact, don't even touch it. Do we overstate our case and then we lose the grace? Jesus talks a bit about this. I want you to see this. We'll get there someday. Over in Matthew chapter 12, we should know this verse, but Matthew chapter 12, verse 20, it says this, a bruised reed he will not break. He's quoting Isaiah, but Jesus is speaking here. He says, a bruised reed I will not break, a smoldering wick I will not snuff out till he has brought justice through to victory. Do we do that sometimes? At least I've done it. Overstayed our case. It's hard to talk so much about grace because Paul even did that. Should we go on sinning that grace may increase? By no means we've died to sin. Live in it no longer. But guys, don't squash the celebrating. It's 356 days till Jesus' birthday. It might not even be his birthday, but it's the time the world comes together and they celebrate it. Don't be a bah humbug, but continuously celebrate Jesus. And that's what this is here. The Magi, they don't know it all yet. We'll never know it all until, until someday when God comes back and the glory is revealed and the veil is lifted. But until then, until then, don't quash those bruised reeds. I'm going to share with you this one thing. Like I shared, we do this study and, and, and this is the study that to me it, I love and we do it today and we'd love for you to come, but you won't be there. So here, let me point this out to you. There's this idea that Paul writes in Philippians. In Philippians chapter 3, it says this in verse 13. This is just the beginning of the, uh, the paragraph. It says, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. My son's going to come in the door here. Hold on a sec. You want to say hi to Jeremiah? There's my son. Everyone say hey, hi. Grandma to order you. Ah, uh, I'll get some coffee. That's my kid. I don't want to stop this because I only have a moment, but I want to show you this. Forgetting about what is behind, strain towards the head because of Christ Jesus. Forget about the wrongs you've done. Forget even about the good you did. Because let's be honest, it's it's not as good. What, what does it say there? Is your righteousness is like filthy rags, Scripture say. Compared to Jesus, it's not. Forget about the sins you've committed. As the east is from the west, so far has he removed. And forget about the sins you've heard about. Stay away from gossip and forget about it. Why? 356 days. Jesus has come. Why wait? 
Celebrate today. Forget about it. Have a blessed day. Bye.